across and because that'll help the students because the students can walk across and faculty come up from here We acknowledge that Huron is located on the traditional lands of the Anishinaabek, Haudenosaunee, Lenapewak, and Chinungtun nations on lands connected with the London Township and Somber Treaties of 1796 and the Dish with One Spoon Covenant Wampum. With this, we respect the long-standing relationships that Indigenous nations have to this land as they are the original caretakers. We acknowledge historical and ongoing injustices that Indigenous peoples, First Nations, Métis, and Inuit endure in Canada, and we accept responsibility as a public institution to contribute toward revealing and correcting miseducation as well as renewing respectful relationships with Indigenous communities through our teaching, research, and community service. Hello and welcome. My name is Vicki Sweeney, and I am the Associate Dean of the Faculty of Arts and Social Science. It is my great pleasure to be with all of you this evening, whether you are here in this beautiful theater or joining us online on the live stream. 
Welcome one and all. Joining me in the platform party this evening are, from your left to right, Dr. Dan Smith, Dean of Theology, Jennifer Morocco, Huron Registrar, Matthew Chasmar, President of the Huron University College Students Council, and finally, Dr. Jeff Reed, Provost and Dean of the Faculty of Arts and Social Science. I'll now invite Dr. Reed to share some welcoming remarks with us. Dr. Reed. Thank you, Vicki. Uh, good evening, everybody, and welcome to Huron. I'm delighted to have you all joining us for this very special event, and I guess I should say I'm especially delighted to have you all here in person uh, for one of the very first events that we're having in this brand new theater following the COVID pandemic, or at least towards the end, we hope, of the COVID pandemic. I want to bring you greetings as well on behalf of our president, Dr. Barry Craig, who I know many of you have met and may have been hoping would be here. Unfortunately, he is uh, in Toronto for an important recruiting event today, so he cannot be here uh, tonight with us. But I know he is immensely proud of all of our award, prize, and scholarship winners, and wishes he could be here to offer you his personal congratulations. Before offering some brief reflections, I want to take the time to acknowledge some very important contributors to this evening. First, I want to talk about the faculty. Huron truly is a special place to go to school. Students are supported here like nowhere else, and frequently form lifelong attachments to the institution and its people. Much of that is because of our faculty, who not only offer a world-class experience in the classroom, but also are highly engaged with our students outside of it. A sign of how deeply our faculty care for their students is uh, how many faculty we have here today to present awards. Oftentimes awards that they themselves have donated, or simply to show support to their students. This is what makes Huron such a wonderful institution of higher learning and such a rewarding and collegial place to work. Second, I want to recognize the Huron staff. I don't know if I fully appreciated how many close and warm relationships develop between students and staff until I assumed my current administrative role and got to see things from that vantage point. But I have really come to appreciate how staff are like the yin, the faculty's yang, if you will. For every faculty member who goes above and beyond for a student by giving them extra help on an assignment, for example, there is a staff member supporting them through a personal or a health crisis or by some other means. I see the bonds of mentorship and friendship that form between staff and students and it's a beautiful thing to witness. Tonight I want to acknowledge in particular the efforts of the events team of Kate McDonald and Siobhan Koo, the registrar Jennifer Morocco for helping adjudicate tonight's awards among other things, the Faculty of Social Science, uh, Arts and Social Science Coordinator, Sherry Wells Foster, the Finance Team, the Information Technology Team, the Communications Team, the Maintenance Team who helped set up, and our student interns and the Huron Dining Hall staff, all of whose efforts and collaborations have made this wonderful evening possible. And it's sort of a sign of how much effort goes into an event like this, that there are so many different people to, to thank and reference. Uh, so students, parents, family, and friends in the audience, I'm going to ask you to join me in offering our thanks to the faculty and staff for everything they do for our students with a round of applause. Thank you. <laughs> and when I say there's a lot of faculty here, we've got like three rows of faculty, so I'm not good at math, but I'm guessing we've got like 20 to 30, maybe even 40 faculty members here tonight. Third, as I look out into the audience, I see the faces of many family and friends, people who in many cases have paid for our students' tuition and education, and of course we thank you for, for that. But more importantly, perhaps, <laughs> people who have supported their children, siblings, friends, and partners through the ups and downs of a university degree, particularly during these past couple of years where there have been some formidable obstacles for students to overcome. I've used this line before, but I'm going to use it again because it works so well. If it takes a village to raise a child, it certainly takes one to support a university student. And parents, family, partners, and friends are a huge part of that village. Fourth, I'm extremely grateful to our donors, some of whom are here today, who show their commitment to Huron's mission to provide elite but not elitist education and create leaders with heart through their generosity. 
You too, donors, are part of the community that supports our students on their journey through their university degrees and beyond. Students, staff, and faculty, can I ask you now to give a round of applause and thanks to our donors and your parents, family, friends, and partners for everything they do to enable your success. Am I ever going to talk about the students? Yes, yes, I will talk. <laughs> Finally, of course, we are here to celebrate our students. This group of students is especially inspiring. University is never easy. The adjustment from high school to university is always a daunting challenge and a big step to take. For many students, it involves moving away from home for the first time. In the case of many students as well, both international and domestic, this can include moving very far away from home, indeed, as well as adjusting to a new culture climate and sometimes country. So new climate is sometimes a big challenge for some of our students too. On top of all this, we've had a global pandemic to worry about with all the anxiety that entails and all the obstacles it has thrown in students' paths. And yet these students here tonight have not only persisted through these adverse circumstances, they have thrived. So much so that at one of Canada's premier universities, they are standing before us tonight to receive awards and scholarships that acknowledge their outstanding achievements. This is a remarkable accomplishment, and I think we should take a moment to consider and recognize that. Faculty and staff, audience members, let's give our scholarship and award winners a heartfelt round of applause as well. Now, I don't want to go on too much longer. You know, if you give an academic a microphone, it can go on. Uh, this isn't a convocation address, but I did think I should offer some brief remarks. I want to use this opportunity to reflect on Huron's motto, Leaders with Heart. Leaders with Heart sounds a little cheesy, let's be honest, but it embodies something really important. We want our students to graduate from Huron University College with a social conscience, with a sense of their own privilege and of the responsibilities that that privilege entails. And make no mistake, Simply by being at Huron, let alone graduating, our students are among a privileged group that includes those who come from very underprivileged backgrounds even. So even if you came from a place of a relative lack of privilege, just by being here, you are in a privileged position. Only 22.4% of Canadians have university degrees, Canadian adults. Only 6.7% of people worldwide graduate from universities. So, by the time you finish your degrees here, you will be part of that 6.7%, and that does uh, carry with it both privilege and responsibility. In 2015, the median annual salary for Canadians with a bachelor's degree was over $80,000 a year, nearly $30,000 more per year than those with a high school diploma. There are, of course, variations within this picture that signal to us some of the work that our students can do. Men with degrees still make more on average than women, for example. White graduates still make more on average than BIPOC graduates. There are enormous disparities in wealth distribution regionally, globally, and indeed locally. Just outside of London, Ontario, for example, our friends and neighbors, Chippewa of the Thames First Nation and Oneida of the Thames First Nation are on boil water advisories, while we in nearby London enjoy the privilege of safe drinking water. In addition to these and other problems of social inequality, the world faces daunting challenges such as global warming, wars such as those in Ukraine, Syria, and Yemen, and of course, the continuing specter of COVID-19. With all of these things and more going on in the world, reading the news, whether online or in a newspaper, for those of us still stuck in the 20th century reading newspapers, I get two of them delivered every day, uh, can sometimes feel overwhelming. And it might be tempting, in fact, to give in to despair. Yet when I look out at this group of students sitting here tonight, I am full of optimism for the future. I know that these students are going to leave Huron equipped with a sense of social responsibility and the skills required to go out and make the world a better place. And that is why it is an absolute pleasure to be here tonight with you, celebrating and recognizing their accomplishments, yes, but also making an investment in their potential. And with that, I will conclude by saying many congratulations to the students receiving awards, prizes, and scholarships today. Well done. We look forward to more great things from you in the future. Thank you.
Thank you very much, Dr. Reed. We'll now move on to what you're all here excited and eager to do, and that is to get on to the presentation of our scholarships and awards. I do want to just run through a few procedural uh, instructions for you uh, to make sure that the night goes nice and smoothly. As I call out presenters and students' names, you will make your way respectively to the center of the stage. So presenters can come from stage left and our uh, honorees uh, from this area of the stage. When the presenters come up onto the stage, you may go and retrieve the certificate that you will be handing to the student recipient. Considering COVID, we do ask that presenters and students forego the shaking of hands for tonight and only exchange the certificate. Once you get your award, we do have a photographer at the front of the stage who will take a picture and then you may uh, return to your seats. Just as a note to some of our presenters, I may in some cases ask you to remain on stage because you will be uh, putting uh, or presenting an award uh, in short order rather than to have you go back to your seats only to return back up. Following the ceremony, recipients and their families are invited to have photos taken against a Huron backdrop by a professional photographer. And this photo opportunity will be available to you in the hallway outside of the theater. These photos will be made available to you in the days following the ceremony. We are really delighted to have so many of you with us today as we recognize the achievements of our students. As with all social events though, it is possible that we will have a few no-shows, late attendees, or yet others who forgot to RSVP. If you know right now, students, that you had forgotten to RSVP, please let Kate know. Kate, give a little wave, thank you. Uh, and uh, see her and we'll make sure that you are recognized and honored uh, this evening. Also, please withhold your applause until we reach the end of each category. I will invite your applause at those appropriate times. We'll begin tonight with recognition of our first year Helmuth Scholars. Helmuth Scholarships recognize both excellent academic achievement and outstanding contributions beyond the classroom. And he's got a sixth sense. I invite Dr. Jeff Reed to come forward <laughs> to present our first year scholarships. Beginning with the Paul Branscombe Memorial Leadership Scholarship awarded to Eden Brown. Peyton Mackey. Joshua Underwood. And Emma Webb. We will now award the International Presidential Scholarships The first scholarship is awarded to Harshin Carr. We also have with us Thien Liu. Thien is also receiving the Scotiabank Fund for International Education. And do we have Pia Mather with us tonight? Jeff will accept the award in their absence. <laughs> Please join me in congratulating our first year recipients. I asked Dr. Jeff Reed to also present our second year scholarships and awards beginning with the Paul Branscombe Memorial Leadership Scholarship awarded to Krista Cooper.
The Principal John Grant Morden Scholarship is awarded to Abigail Luffman. For this next award, I invite Dr. Neil Brooks to come on stage. The Shauna and Nicole Strongman Memorial Scholarship is awarded to Aryan Lakan Paul. Aryan is also receiving the Scotiabank Second Year Scholarship and the Huron International Scholarship. Thank you, Dr. Brooks. Dr. Reed, I'll now have you come forward to present the rest of the Second Year Scholarships and Awards. The Most Reverend Terence E. and Alice Jean Finley Award for Community Leadership is presented to Kogi Kogan. Kogi is also receiving the Huron Scholarship of Excellence. The Duncanson Family Scholarship in History is awarded to Ethan Small. Ethan is also receiving the Huron Scholarship Award. Haley Budgel is receiving the Great Minds Great Heart Scholarship and is also receiving the Huron Scholarship of Excellence. The International Presidential Scholarship is awarded to Matsin Kitamisi. And Alvin Omondi. and Daya Sony, who appears not with us tonight. The Huron Scholarship of Excellence is awarded to Emma Baldwin. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. I was looking for you here. I'm glad you spoke up, my dear. <laughs> I'll call Emma Baldwin to the stage to receive the Huron Scholarship of Excellence. The Huron Scholarship Award is presented to Jonah McPhee. and Adele Menzies. I'll give a moment unless they're somewhere else in the crowd. Oh, wonderful. The Huron International Scholarship is awarded to Rafaela Drummond. <laughs> Saeed Muhammad.
Shivanj Mohan. and Sky Chang. Please join me in congratulating our second year recipients. Dr. Reed have a little bit of a break, and I will invite Jennifer Morocco, our registrar, to come forward to present our third year scholarships and awards. Beginning with the John Cronin third year scholarship awarded to Azmatullah Azizi Arab. <laughs> yes. We'll let that off script one go. <laughs> The Francis Pang Scholarship is awarded to Arthur Wu. Arthur is also receiving the Huron International Scholarship. For this next award, I once again invite Dr. Neil Brooks to come on stage. The Shauna and Nicole Strongman Memorial Scholarship is awarded to Ella Vitoles. Ella is also receiving the Huron Achievement Award. I will now ask Jennifer Morocco to come forward to present the rest of the third year scholarships. The International Presidential Scholarship is awarded to Sanchi Shah. The Huron Achievement Award is presented to Arahan Wadwa. The Huron Scholarship Award is presented to Jacob Reed. and Danielle Walls. The Huron International Scholarship is awarded to Jatindra Bhattacharya. Zane Nasser. And Elsie Omondi. Please join me in congratulating our third year recipients. I asked Jennifer Morocco to also present our fourth year scholarships and awards. The Paul Branska Memorial Leadership Scholarship is awarded to Ange Zhang.
Ange is also receiving the Doris and Owen Foster Scholarship. He's looking a little too comfortable in his seat, so I'll have Matthew Chasmar come and accept his Colonel Ibbotson Leonard Scholarship. <laughs> <laughs> the recipient of the next award is joining us on online rather on the live stream. So we would now like to recognize Jordan Hahn, who received the James R. Shuttleworth Memorial Scholarship. The Godso Family Scholarships of Distinction in English and Philosophy are awarded to Cree Davis. <laughs> Avery Fernandez. and Piri Hayes. The Great Minds Great Hearts Scholarship is awarded to Varuna Kalyan Kumar. Varuna is also receiving the Huron International Scholarship. The International Presidential Scholarship is awarded to Malaika Vezavavala. The Huron Scholarship of Excellence is awarded to Camille Smitterly. The Huron International Scholarship is awarded to Tram Huang. And to Yuvraj Sakdeva. Please join me in congratulating our fourth year recipients. We now have a number of Huron Awards to present and I again ask the lovely Jennifer Morocco to present the first of these. Beginning with the Jordan Propass Memorial Award presented to Alexis Magder. Alexis is also receiving the Huron Scholarship Award. The Joe French Award is presented to Nawaf Numat. The Inherit the Earth Clothing Environmental Stewardship Award is presented to Rohan Jan. For this next award, I invite Dr. Andrea King to come on stage.
The Nelson Heapy Award for Intellectual Achievement is presented to Erdania Anderson. Erdania is also receiving the Paul Branscombe Memorial Leadership Scholarship and the Mr. and Mrs. Benno Schachter Memorial Prize in Philosophy. <laughs> And yes, please join us in congratulating our Huron Award recipients. That concludes our year-specific and Huron Awards. We will now move on to departmental awards. We begin with Center for Global Studies, and I invite Dr. Mark Franca to come on stage. We begin with Center for Global Studies Book Award for Achievement in Experiential Learning, presented to Paloma Terra Figueredo. Center for Global Studies Book Award for Excellence in Critical Studies of Gender, Sexuality, or Sexual Differences is presented to Sophie Holland. Sophie is also receiving the Huron Scholarship Award. Center for Global Studies Book Award for Excellence in the Study of Research Methodology is presented to Winnie Zhao. And Center for Global Studies Praxis Book Award is presented to Ziana Kotadia. Ziana is also receiving is also receiving the Colonel Ibbotson Leonard Scholarship. Thank you, Dr. Franca. Next, we have economics, and I first invite Dr. Uzden Sunger to come on stage. The Philip A. Alexander Prize is awarded to Michaela Morali. Michaela is also receiving the International Presidential Scholarship. I now invite Dr. Ian Hersog to come on stage. The first year economics prize is awarded to Ronak Lad. Ronak is also receiving the Huron Scholarship of Excellence. Next, we have English and Cultural Studies, and I first invite Dr. Neil Brooks to come on stage. The Mary Kathleen Brooks Prize in Poetry is awarded to Josephine Windsor. Josephine is also receiving the Great Minds Great Heart Scholarship and the Huron Scholarship of Excellence. I'll ask Dr. Brooks to remain on stage while I now invite Dr. Amanda DiPogno to come on stage. The first year prize for English and Cultural Studies is awarded to Emmett Dalzilio. Emmett is also receiving the Huron Scholarship of Excellence. I now invite Dr. Scott Schofield to come on stage. The Jared Prize is awarded to Victoria Vandenbelt. 
Victoria is also receiving the Godso Family Scholarships of Distinction in English and Philosophy, the Dr. Don Milady and Dr. Rowley uh, Mossop Diversity Scholarship, and the Huron Proficiency Award. I now ask Dr. Brooks to come forward to present the Modern Studies Prize awarded to Sydney Stewart. Sydney is also receiving the Principal John Grant Morden Scholarship. <laughs> I think everyone's itching to give some applause. So let's applaud. <laughs> it's like the seventh inning stretch, right? You need to get it out. Uh, next we have French studies and I first invite Dr. Karine Baudouin to come on stage to present the first two awards. The Lee Clark Prize for French 2900 is awarded to Gillian Hunnisett. Gillian is also receiving the Huron Scholarship of Excellence. The Cornelia Maria Vanderwell Prize in French 2600E is awarded to Rachel Fuller. Rachel is also receiving the Huron Scholarship Award. I now invite Dr. Andrea King to come on stage. The Turville Memorial Book Prize is awarded to Annie Boss. Annie is also, <laughs> Annie is also receiving the Jordan Propass Memorial Award and the Huron Scholarship Award. Next, we have history, and I first invite Dr. Ne uh, Nina Reed Maroney and Dr. Tom Peace to come on stage to present awards to our next recipient. Dr. Reed Maroney will first present the Jack Blocker Prize in U.S. History to Nikesh Mehta Spooner. Dr. Peace will now present Nikesh, so don't go anywhere. <laughs> You've got more swag coming. The Sarah Ann Martin Memorial Award, the Duncanson Family Scholarship in History, the Godso Family Scholarships of Distinction in Economics and History, and the Huron Scholarship of Excellence. Congratulations. <laughs> And I do ask both Dr. Reed Maroney and Dr. Peace to remain on stage while I now invite Dr. Tim Compo to come on stage to present the next award. The Medline Dalglish Prize in History is awarded to William Chapman Black. William is also receiving the Paul Branscom Memorial Leadership Scholarship and the Godso Family Scholarships of Distinction in Economics and History. I now ask Dr. Peace to come forward to present the next two awards, beginning with the Gary Owens Prize in British History, awarded to Scott Smalley. Scott is also receiving the Persistence Award. The John Gordon, oh, I still need you, Tom. <laughs> the John Gordon Rowe Prize is awarded to Kyoko Telfer. Kyoko is also receiving the Huron Scholarship Award. Now you can go. <laughs> and I'll ask Dr. Reed Maroney to come forward to present the Huron Community History Center Prize for Public History awarded to Benjamin Harris. Benjamin is also receiving the Huron Scholarship Award.
Next, we have Japanese studies, and I invite Dr. Michia Kawai to come on stage. The Japanese Program Award of Distinction is presented to Maram Amar. And to Yuki Wang. Are we ready for another clap? <laughs> Next, we have Management and Organizational Studies, and I first invite Richie Bloomfield to come on stage. Academic Excellence Award for a Moss Double Major is presented to Amy Smith. Amy is also receiving the Unsung Leader Scholarship, HUCSC, the Alan Donald Scholarship in Bursary, and the Huron Proficiency Award. I now invite Dr. Bill Irwin to come on stage. Dr. Bill Irwin Phoenix Award is presented to Angela Tarrant. Angela is also receiving the Kevin M. Cunliffe Memorial Fourth Year Scholarship. I now invite Dr. Srikanth Ramani to come on stage. Management and Organizational Studies Leadership Award is presented to Sarah Shelton. <laughs> I now invite Dr. Marina Kalaisti to come on stage. The Dr. Eddie Smet Mathematics Award of Merit is presented to Mai Ahmet. Mai is also receiving the Huron Scholarship Award. If I may ask Dr. Neil Bradford to join Dr. Palesti on stage, they will present awards to our next recipient. Dr. Palesti will first present the, Eddie, the Dr. Eddie Smet Mathematics Prize to Lawson Cross. And Dr. Neil Bradford will present Lawson with two other prizes, the, Internet, uh, the Introduction to Political Science 1020E Prize and the Huron Scholarship of Excellence. And I'll ask Dr. Bradford to remain on stage just for a minute or so. Next, we do have philosophy, and I invite Dr. Steve Bland to come on stage. The Philosophy 1350 FG Prize is awarded to Megan Johnston, John Stone, pardon me. And you did that wonderful jump up on the stage. Do I get to see that? <laughs> It'd be just between us, yes. <laughs> we'll make sure that Megan gets her lovely prize. Thank you. Next, we have political science, and I will ask Dr. Bradford to come forward to present the Political Science Prize in Canadian Politics awarded to Caden Wollstonecroft.
I now invite Dr. David Blair to come on stage to present the remaining awards in political science. Oh, come on up. <laughs> Dr. Lindsay Squerger will present, I'm assuming, the political science prize in comparative politics to Mason Brown. I knew someone would throw me a curveball. <laughs> Mason is also receiving the Principal John Grant Morden Scholarship. Now I'll invite Dr. David Blair up to present the Political Science Prize in International Politics awarded to Jahan Mohammed. Jahan is also receiving the Huron Scholarship of Excellence. And we have the Political Science Prize in Political Theory awarded to Theo Till. Theo is also receiving the Huron Scholarship Award. Our final departmental awards come from the Department of Psychology and I first invite Dr. Stephen Van Hedger and Dr. Neil Brooks to come on stage to present awards to our next recipient. Dr. Van Hedger will first present the Professor Frederick Walter Byrd Prize in Psychology to Irvi Maheshwari. And I'll have Dr. Brooks present Irvi with the Shauna and Nicole Strongman Memorial Scholarship, the Godso Family Scholarships of Distinction and Economics and History, and the Huron International Scholarship. I now invite Dr. Irene Chung and Dr. David Blair to come on stage to present awards to our next recipient. <laughs> Should have had you stay on stage, eh, David? Um, Dr. Chung will first present the Dr. Nelson Heapy Award in Social Psychology to Jez Paul Bassi. And I will ask Dr. Chung to remain on stage while Dr. Blair presents Jez Paul with the Political Science Prize in International Politics and the Huron Scholarship of Excellence. I now ask Dr. Chung to come forward to present the Dr. Stephen Ertl Award in Quantitative Psychology presented to Nicole Enns. Nicole is also receiving the Award of Excellence for part-time students. And we just have three more awards to present before we move to the next part of our program. We begin with the Huron International Scholarship. Oh, I can't read the handwriting, but I'll give it a try. Daxiun Kanan. Did I do okay? <laughs> Come on up. The Huron Scholarship of Excellence to Kian Chen. And I believe it's the JP Program Award of Distinction to Babette Norton. <laughs> I'm just happy we got you. Come on up. <laughs> the generosity of donors and faculty members have made all of these prizes possible. Please join in a round of applause for our prize winners.
My colleagues are immensely productive scholars, and while they publish many articles and book chapters between them each year, it is traditional to present copies of books published that year to the provost, and the books are then donated to the Huron Silcox Library, which has developed a very extensive and diverse collection of books written or edited by former and current faculty. I would like to begin by asking Dr. Neil Brooks to present on behalf of himself and Dr. Sarah Blanchett, Narrative Art and the Politics of Health to Provost Dr. Jeff Reed. <laughs> I will next ask Dr. Andrea King to present her book, Spectral Living. I will next ask Dr. Jennifer Quigley to present her book, Divine Accounting, Theoeconomics in Early Christianity. Finally, I will now ask Dr. Lindsay Scorgi to present her book, Conflict at the Edge of the African State, the ADF Rebel Group in the Congo-Uganda Borderland. Congratulations. <laughs> we would also like to recognize our other faculty publications, including Govern Like a Girl, The Women Who Became Canada's First Ministers by Dr. Kate Graham. With the Loyal, You Show Yourself Loyal, Essays on Relationships in the Hebrew Bible in Honor of Saul M. Olyan by Dr. Tracy Lamoche. Religion, Neuroscience, and New Physics in Dialogue, Stone Age Souls in Modern Minds by Dr. Darren Marks. I'm gonna give this my best try. El Cambio. Climatico y las Comunidades Indigenes, Indigenas uh, on Los Andes del Ecuador by Dr. Matthew McBurney. And Contract Farming, Capital and State, Corporatization of Indian Agriculture by Dr. Ritika Shrimali. Congratulations to all of our faculty for their impressive publications. <laughs> To conclude the ceremony, we move to the recognition of some of our faculty awards. And for this, I turn the podium over to Dr. Jeff Reed. Thank you, Vicki. Congratulations to all our scholarship and award recipients once again. We now move on to recognize several members of our academic community who play a key role in making student success at Huron possible. We have several faculty awards that are awarded annually and you can find on the last page of this program. Well, these awards were already given at last year's online convocation, so we will not ask the recipients to come on stage. We want them to be recognized, uh, have their contrib contributions recognized here in person now that we can be together. Please join us in a round of applause for our faculty award recipients. Dr. Marina Palasti, Dr. Sawako Akai, Dr. Tara Dumas, Dr. Christine Sang, and Dr. Kate Graham and Dr. Neil Bradford. Finally, we would like to recognize the recipient of a recent visiting research fellowship of African-Canadian history. We ask Dr. Olivet Otele to join us on stage as Vicki Sweeney presents the award. Oh, did that do it? Yes. Okay. Olivet Otele 
professor of history at the University of Bristol and fellow of the Royal Histor Historical Society, is the recipient of the 2022 Visiting Research Fellowship in African Canadian History with the Huron Community History Center and the Department of History. Professor Otelia's fellowship research is part of her forthcoming book project entitled Doorway to the World, 15 Ports That Built Empires Through Slavery. Her work at Huron will focus on Toronto and the interconnected histories of black communities in southwestern Ontario. Her most recent book, African Europeans, An Untold Story, published with Hearst in 2020, was chosen as a best book of 2020 by The Guardian, History Today, and Waterstones, and is a 2022 nominee for a Los Angeles Times Book Award. Supported by the W. Galen Weston Fund for British History at Huron, the Visiting Fellowship extends Professor Otelier's longstanding collaboration with Huron, where Professor Otelier helped to establish the Phantoms of the Past Transatlantic Research Project with colleagues in English and Cultural Studies, History, and the Center for Undergraduate Research Learning. Congratulations and thank you, Professor. This brings us to the end of today's celebration. And you'll all be relieved to hear that I won't be talking much more. I have several people to thank again before we adjourn the ceremony. Again, thanks to all of you in the audience, both the recipients and those who have helped them along their journeys. Thank you to our faculty and staff who make this event possible once again. Once the platform party has left the room, please join us for the reception in the Judy and Alan Medline Student Commons, which is a, a lovely facility basically across the, the lobby here that you'll see. Thank you for celebrating with us and thank you for supporting Huron. It was suggested to me that I end with an inspirational quote and I made a joke about this last year. Uh, or, sorry, I guess I should say three years ago or whatever the last time we did this in person. Um, but I won't repeat the joke, but uh, I do think there is an inspirational uh, quotation I found uh, from someone I did do research on actually as a doctoral student. And this is from the French novelist Anatole France, who said, education is nine tenths encouragement. Uh, and this is a bit what I meant when I said that we're making an investment in, in these young people here today. I hope we've done our part to encourage our leaders with heart today. Thank you very much, and we'll see you across the way.